welcome to another edition of the Silverbird Selection. Today's review is something a little bit different because I'm going to be reviewing the Silverbird release from 1988, 1, 2, 3, which is a compilation featuring three games that they'd already released in the Silver Range packaging a couple of years prior. So this is quite a rare thing. I didn't even know it existed until I saw it on eBay and I actually managed to pick up a copy for £3, so I'm quite happy about that. That's pretty much what it cost originally. So what we're going to do is take a look at the packaging first and foremost and then we're going to take a look briefly at the three games that are included, just a little refresher about what those games were like and then give this thing an overall rating as a compilation. So let's get on with it. Let's take a closer look at the packaging for this compilation then. As you can see, it clearly says 1, 2, 3 at the top there with the list of the three games that are on the compilation. BMX Kids, Ninja Master and Rock and Wrestle. So we've got BMXs, Ninjas and Wrestling. This may well be the most 80s compilation ever released. As you can see, it's a 2 dollars Silverbird release. And then the rest of the front cover's got bits of images from the original Silver Range packaging. So you've got the Ninja from Ninja Master, the guy on the BMX from BMX Kids and the wrestlers from Rock and Wrestle and the Silverbird logo in the corner as you'd expect. On the spine it just says 123 which doesn't give a lot away if you were looking through the games in a shop or something like that back in the day. And on the back we've got four screenshots and bizarrely it's decided to choose two screenshots from Ninja Master, uh, the Spectrum ones as you can see, uh, the title screen from Rock and Wrestle and just a random screen from the first level of BMX Kids. So interesting choice of screenshots there, not perhaps the most representative of what's going on on the three games. And it says thrills and spills and complete chaos in this one, two, three bonanza. So here's something a little bit different. Normally I wouldn't look at the tape because I'd be loading the tape while I'm doing the review of the packaging. Uh, but since I'm not loading the games up on this one, here's the tape. You can see it's printed onto the cassette one, two, three with the names of the two games on this side, Ninja Master and BMX Kids. And on the opposite side, as you'd expect, Rock and Wrestle. Well, there you go. I might do something on what all the tapes look like at some point in these Silverbird range games, but uh, we'll see how that goes. If I'm really bored, maybe I'll do something about the tapes. So moving inside in its typical Silverbird range packaging, you've got the four exciting Silverbird titles advertised, Combat Crazy, Star Strike 2, Antiriad and Rebel Star 2 on this particular one. There's no instructions in the inlay though, it's completely blank and that's because the instructions come in this booklet instead. Obviously you've got the instructions for three games and it looks like it's multi-format as well. You've got Amstrad, Spectrum and Commodore 64 so they weren't likely to be able to fit all that printed on the inlay. So I'm not going to go through the instructions in too much detail but you can see you've got the uh, Rock and Wrestle information first fairly detailed it looks like oh yeah they've kept all the moves and stuff on there as well which was on the packaging when we reviewed that game uh, so that's that covers most of the instructions i imagine and then if we move on to the other side what have we got bmx kids you've got gameplay instructions loading instructions and then ninja master looks like the same as well so pretty much they've recreated all of the information from the original inlays on this what is that eight page instruction manual so pretty good i would say so that's the packaging what we're going to do now is go and have a little look at each of the games and i'll share my thoughts about them again if you want to see the original reviews of these games obviously you can click on the cards i'm going to put up in the corner and watch the original reviews of the three games so first up we have bmx kids which is a pretty well programmed game very similar looking and playing to excite bike the classic nintendo game you have to drive along, win the race or finish in the top four of the race on your BMX and after the first level you also have to start performing wheelies and stunts. I think it's a pretty decent game, graphics are quite nice, the sound's alright in game, the music on the title screen was really good, that was a Rob Hubbard tune. And overall I think it's quite a playable game but a bit limited, the levels are really short and after the first couple of levels it gets really quite difficult. But overall I thought it was a pretty decent game and I gave it a 7 out of 10 when I reviewed it originally. The second game on the compilation is Ninja Master and I think I upset a few people with the score I gave this because this is a universally derided game but I didn't actually think it was that bad. It's kind of a hyper sports style multi event sports game but with ninjas and yes the stages are fairly limited it's basically just hitting things that come flying at you 
waggling a joystick to break a board or shooting at a target that comes past with a blowpipe so yes the graphics are not good uh, the sounds are quite nice and it's got some decent speech and it's also got a really nice presentation showing you how to play each stage before it starts it gets boring fairly quickly it's fair to say it's not the best game in the world by any means but i do think it provides a bit of fun and a bit of value possibly more as a game to play with friends even though you can't have multiple players at the same time you could compete to see how good a ninja you were against other people so yeah this got terrible reviews and everyone seems to hate it but i really didn't think it was that bad and i gave it a score of 6.5 which is definitely a little bit overrating it but i still think it had a little bit of value even if it wasn't an amazing game And the final game on this compilation was Rock and Wrestle. This was a re-release of the Melbourne House full price game. And here it is again re-released on this compilation. And I really like this game. It may not have the best graphics in the world. They're a bit chunky and blocky. But you've got loads of different moves. You've got one or two player action. The music in the background is really good. And the sound effects are pretty decent as well. The major flaw with it is when you're playing against a computer, when they pin you, you can almost never kick out. But, but I still think it's quite a bit of fun. It definitely takes a bit of practice to get the different moves sorted out and things like that. But, but I think as a two-player game particularly, it would have been good value. And certainly on this compilation, definitely the best of the three games. I gave it a rating of 7.1, by the way. So there you go, that's a quick roundup of the three games on this compilation, and none of them I would say are absolutely awful. Obviously Ninja Master is the worst of the three, but I think they've all got some playability. So in terms of the review for this compilation, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give it its own score for the packaging, because obviously it's got its own packaging, but then the other scores will just be averages of the scores that I gave for the different elements for the three individual games when I reviewed them. So starting with the packaging, I think it's pretty decent. I mean, all it is is a recreation of bits of the original packaging in the Silverbird 299 range packaging. So it's not amazing, but the instructions are pretty comprehensive. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 for the packaging. And then to quickly go through the other scores, presentation averages out at 7, graphics averages out at 6, sound averaged out at 7, playability averaged out at 6, which I think was 7 for Rock and Wrestle, six for BMX Kids and five for Ninja Master. That gives it a total score of 7.1. And as for whether it's worth it, I mean, I don't think you can argue three games for 2.99, two of which are definitely very playable and one of which might be a little bit of a duffer but still provides a pound's worth of value for sure. It's an absolute bargain, this compilation. It's a bit of a shame they didn't do a few more of them. That rounds off my review of this 1-2-3 compilation. Definitely a bit of a curiosity in the Silverbird range, but not a bad one by any means. If you've got any thoughts about the compilation and the games that are featured on it, then let me know in the comments. And I've also got a question for you, which is, if you were making this compilation, which has to feature two 199 original Silver Range games and one re-release from the Silver Range, what three games would you put on it? So I'm going to put a list of most of the games that qualify for this on the screen. This is just a photo of the inlay of one of the later Silver Range games. So you have a pick from these and let me know which three you think would make the best compilation. For me, I decided to go with a compilation with a bit of a spacey, puzzly theme. So I would have chosen Warhawk, Caverns of Erebon and the re-release of Activision Zenji. So let me know in the comments once again which three games you choose for a Silverbird 1-2-3 compilation. I'll be back with another game review very soon. Thanks for watching this one and see you next time.